Hi everybody, in this video we're looking at chromosomes. Just want to point out a few important things and some bits of vocabulary that you need to be aware of. So first of all we need to be clear about the difference between the terms haploid and diploid. So if we start off with a body cell, human body cells have 46 chromosomes inside them. And those 46 chromosomes are in pairs. So 23 of them came from your mum and 23 came from your dad. When you have a cell um, or a nucleus which has pairs of chromosomes, so two sets, so there's one set of chromosomes and there's another set that's paired with it, we say it's diploid. And we give it the term 2n. So n represents a single set. So there's one set n, there's another set n. So this cell is diploid, we say it's 2n. Now our body cells, the first body cell that comes into being is the zygote and zygotes come from gametes. So one of the gametes from say the mum will have 23 chromosomes, it has one of each pair and it will fuse with the other gamete which also has 23 chromosomes, one of each pair. So in the gametes when they fuse together we end up with two sets, two pairs for each. The gametes we say are n. This is a haploid cell or a haploid nucleus. It has one set of chromosomes. This is a haploid cell. It has one set n chromosomes. So if we take the numbers of chromosomes away we can just replace it with n here meaning haploid, n meaning haploid, 2n meaning diploid. This is important because different organisms have got different numbers of chromosomes. So we can use the terms n and 2n and we can use the terms haploid and diploid when we're talking about any organisms at all. It doesn't matter how many chromosomes they have, we know that we're talking about either single sets which we find in the gametes or the paired sets which we find in body cells. The other thing I just want to point out is that this shows why it's important that when you make the gametes, to make them you have to have what we call a reduction division. So when these gametes get made, they're made from diploid cells and that diploid cell has to split itself and become a haploid cell. If that didn't happen then we wouldn't end up with haploid cells here. If we had a diploid cell here and a diploid cell here, we'd end up with 4n. So we'd end up doubling the chromosome number each time the gametes fused. And that just wouldn't work. So to make gametes, you have to have a reduction division. You have to go from 2n to n so that those haploid cells can fuse together to form a diploid cell. And what we say is we are restoring the chromosome number. So now I just want to um, point out a couple of phrases and we've got this idea of a chromosome and a chromatid. So here is a chromosome um, and chromosomes have got genes along them. Now there could be hundreds or even thousands of genes. And here is the second chromosome in that pair. So this chromosome has got specific genes along its length. This chromosome here that I've drawn next to it is the corresponding pair and the reason we know it's the pair is that it has the same genes in the same positions. The position that you find a gene on a chromosome is called a gene locus. So each of these bands represents a gene and you can see that let's say this could be the gene for the production of haemoglobin. So the gene for haemoglobin is found in this position, this locus, and it's found in the same position, the same locus on this chromosome. These two are pairs. And we don't just say they're a pair, we call them a homologous pair. So a homologous pair of chromosomes are chromosomes which have the same genes at the same gene loci. 
Now we can draw the chromosomes like this, uh, but sometimes you see them sort of drawn differently. So at various points during uh, the cell cycle, a chromosome will replicate itself. So this chromosome is made of DNA, and if the chromosome replicates itself, it just means it makes a copy of its DNA. So this is still a chromosome, it's just doubled how much DNA there is there. And often when we draw this, we see it drawn and it looks like an X. So this is like our original chromosome and this is the copy of it. These two strands, if you like, are joined together by something called the centromere. This is still a chromosome. There is no difference between this and this in terms of the genetic information that's there. So therefore, we need to draw its homologous pair because both chromosomes will duplicate themselves. So we could say this is a homologous pair. This is just another way of drawing a homologous pair of chromosomes. So it looks different, but it's exactly the same thing. So when we're talking about a chromosome, depending on what stage we're looking at and how we draw it, we could say that this is a chromosome, or we could say this is a chromosome. If you have a chromosome like this, which has replicated, so it looks like that X shape, then the two legs are called chromatids. So this chromosome has got one chromatid here and another chromatid here joined by the centromere. Chromatids on the same chromosome are called sister chromatids. So these two are sister chromatids and these two are sister chromatids. Chromatids on different chromosomes in the same pair so if we said this chromatid and this chromatid, they are non-sister chromatids. Okay, that's all. Thank you.